In this video, we're going to talk about triggering a Fabric Notebook from a Power Automate flow. Uh, as much as I love Power Query and data flows, I, I got to admit that uh, the, the notebook option in Fabric is, is pretty exciting. Uh, you know, they're very powerful. Um, they're fast. And, you know, with Fabric, you know, giving you a notebook environment without having to create it on your own, uh, and also things like Chat GPT and now Fabric Copilot, if that's available to you, it just gets easier and easier to do more advanced things uh, with PySpark or Python in Fabric. So normally, you know, you would use a pipeline in Fabric to orchestrate the refresh of a notebook or a data flow. Um, and there's more great stuff coming for pipelines, for event triggers, et cetera. Um, but uh, Power Automate is an option now if, if you need to do that. Plus, there's tons of business solutions out there uh, with Power Automate already. Uh, so you may want to explore this option. Uh, also, there's all sorts of triggers you can use, uh, you know, when stuff happens, files get added, emails arrive, all, all the great triggers that are available in Power Automate. Um, so before I jump into notebooks, I do want to just say, you know, what I'm about to show can be done with the data flow as well. Uh, and basically all this notebook is doing, it's very basic just for this demonstration. Uh, and I had chat GPT help me come up with this, uh, is just to uh, create a very simple data frame that generates 10 rows of data, uh, gives a row number, and then also puts the current date time. And having that just allows me to troubleshoot to confirm that it's working correctly and add that to a data frame uh, and then write that out to um, a table in Fabric. I just called it T1 with append mode. So I just get 10, 10 rows added every time this notebook runs. Of course, I can do the same thing uh, with a data flow and you, know, you do need to check out which option is best for you. Uh, with this simple one, it doesn't really matter. Uh, this one, again, real simple power query, add 10 rows, add the current date time. Right. And then from within Power Automate, again, you've get all you've got all the awesome triggers. Um, but for my testing, I put this on recurrence, but you could choose whatever trigger works for you. And then there is a refresh, refresh a data flow option. Uh, and then you can, you know, choose uh, type uh, workspace, uh, choose your workspace name. I call the notebook trigger test uh, and then the data flow name. And those should just pop up for you if they don't. You can get them from from the URL. Um, this is the data flow ID here, and then down here at the end of the URL. I mean, you could get this from the the workspace window uh, as well. But here at the end is the workspace ID. And so, if those don't pop up for you, you can just um, enter them uh, as a custom ID, and then it'll it should populate these. And, and this works fine. You can see my green check marks here uh, to refresh that data flow. Uh, but going back to the notebook, uh, I want to trigger this um, from my Power Automate flow as well. And I wasn't really sure how to do that. So, you know, hit the Internet. Um, there's some really good documentation uh, about uh, the Fabric REST APIs. And this page is specific to notebooks. Uh, so check out the documentation. And one of the actions that you can do is a run on demand uh, item job, which is what I wanted to do. And it gives you the syntax that you need. Um, you can also uh, pass, let me scroll down to that one, run a notebook on demand. Uh, it gives you the post command that you need. You need to put in your workspace ID and your artifact ID, and then you can actually pass it parameters. In our case, this notebook doesn't have any, so this gets even simpler, I'll show you in a minute. So there's that guidance. You know, if you're not that familiar with using REST APIs, there is some guidance on Quick Start uh, to get you going. But you know, these this involves app registration, which may be confusing, or maybe you don't know uh, how to go about doing that, uh, or you, you're not allowed to do that uh, where you work. Um, so you know, I wanted to find another option where you could do this uh, without having to, to create an app. So then I found this article and I got excited because it gave me a lot of the guidance I, I needed for the flow I wanted to create. Uh, it has that same post command as we saw before, 
again, with hard-coded uh, workspace ID and notebook ID in there. Uh, and then it showed, hey, you don't need to pass any parameters. So all we need is this simple JSON here to uh, say, hey, we want to run this notebook. So execute it, but no, no parameters to pass. Uh, and then uh, I did try this out. It didn't really work for me, uh, but you know he uses um, Power Automate, but he uses this uh, Business Central uh, approach to to do that. So that that may work for you. So I, I kept searching. I had a lot of what I needed. Uh, then I found this article here, and this article actually gives four options uh, to use. You know, Entra ID authentication within Power Automate uh, to to do this. And it turns out this first one is uh, using a, a service principle um, that isn't really supported yet with the notebook REST API that's coming. Um, so that wasn't an option. Uh, option two, you know, there's pros and cons in each of these. But the one I chose was the one down here that there is a action within Power Automate um, invoke an HTTP request with uh, Entra uh, that you'll see in a second that does allow you to do this. Um, so I hop back over to um, Power Automate to get this set up. And so um, if I go and just show the flow here, again, real, real simple one. All I was testing was the, the functionality. And so what you're, what you're looking for is this invoke HTTP one. Uh, and it has, there's two options and you actually want this second one, this pre-authorized uh, and you can read the documentation as to why that is, but, uh, but you, you choose this one. And when you first set it up, you'll actually have to create that um, connection. Uh, it won't look like this at start. Um, and to show you what it looks like, uh, I'll go here to the connection that it creates and hit edit. And you'll basically have to put in a base resource URL and a resource URI. And I chose the same for both and, th and this worked. Uh, so this HTTPS API fabric dot .com. And that worked for both uh, as well. So hopefully that'll, that'll get you started too. And so what this does, it, it'll then authenticate that article explains it'll work with MFA. Um, this, it creates a connection so you're not hard coding your password into the flow, which is a big no-no, of course. Uh, and so it's, it's a really great option to get going with uh, refreshing these things in Power Automate um, without having to do an app registration, but still have good authentication and good practices. All right. And so then if I go back to the flow, um, once you set up the connection, you'll then have to populate uh, these fields. You want to choose a post. You want to put in um, this uh, the URL that has, again, the workspace ID and the notebook ID hard-coded in there, or you could dynamically put them in there. Uh, if you had multiple notebooks to run, uh, again, you could pass them in as variables or, or from compose steps, that kind of stuff. Uh, and then, again, all we need is this simple execution data thing, empty uh, JSON to go ahead and, and trigger the, the notebook. And this works well. I go back to the run history. Uh, I've been doing some, oops, one-off uh, testing here. I had one fail. Uh, let's do that. I was doing a bunch of stuff at once. Oh, this one failed because I was testing out the data flow test. I since got that working and made a separate flow for that. So the notebook part didn't fail on that one. Um, so that works. And then if I go to the, uh, lake house and I refresh, you know, I just, to, you may have to do that to get the latest data, but I confirm that both the data flow gen two approach and the notebook, uh, approach is working. So every time it refreshes, it adds 10 rows and I can see that it's, uh, working cause, uh, you know, the, the time keeps changing. Uh, for when I ran the flow. So hopefully this approach helps for you and gives you some more options uh, when you're creating business solutions uh, to use Power Automate to trigger either data flows or notebooks. Thanks.